So do's and don'ts in investment. So the contents I will discuss in this class, uh, which consist of uh, ways to make money. And already I have discussed uh, the ways to make money and goals of investment, planning and investment, need of investment, diversification, impact of inflation, investment biases, investment tips, etc. So some of the things I have already discussed with you and I will uh, discuss something which is not discussed yet. So the thing is the most successful investors were not made in a day. So there are a lot of investors uh, uh, like Warren Buffett, Mukesh Ampani. These people are investors and they are still investing money in different modes of investment. Uh, and uh, uh, the learning is important. So uh, this Warren, even Warren Buffett suffers huge amount of losses from investment from the equity share market. So learning ins and outs of the financial world, it will take time to understand uh, everything in the financial market. So every day there is a new experience would come up. So I'm going to explain how we can, uh, we can control our emotions while in the process of investment. So personality as an investor takes time and patience. It's like a re your real life some, some, somewhere, some moment you uh, you behave like a kid. Sometimes your behavior like, you know, like immature. So similarly in investment also, sometimes we behave like an immature investors. So how we can be like, uh, you know, an immature, matured investor, a very good investor. So personality as an investor takes time and patience. So this, uh, this slide is, uh, this uh, I'm not discussing and inflation, everything I have, I have given. So these are the principles of investment. Are we really rational? So that's the main agenda of my presentation today. Are we really rational? Are we really rational? But some people say I'm very rational, but I don't think so. Everyone is rational always 24 into seven or 364 days. Some days we are not rational. We will take decisions which are very irrational. So this irrationality leads to losses. So human beings are, uh, you know, subjected to biases. Uh, the biases are, I will discuss all these biases in this class, anchoring bias, mental accounting, overconfidence, overconfidence, loss aversion, herd behavior, etc. So I will discuss these biases. So human beings are bundled with these kind of biases. So every, you know, the market, market crashes happen because of these biases. So I, I will say some example. This is the first example. Tesla CEO, Tesla, you might have heard about this company. Tesla and the CEO is known as Elon Musk. So one of the richest person in the world. So Tesla CEO Elon Musk said, Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoins. So Bitcoin is one of the uh, dominant cryptocurrency in the world. So a lot of cryptocurrencies out of this crypto cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin positioned as top in terms of investment. Many people, you know, invested in Bitcoin coins okay so started to sell off uh, so this tweet was happened uh, in the month of may 2021 and he said he tweeted tesla will no longer accept bitcoins so what would be the impact so what was happened a market crash the bitcoin market bad crashed and there are a lot of purpose why the Bitcoin market were crashed due to the tweet by a person. So why this tweet was so important. So Bitcoin fell by 40% from its record high levels to 31,000 US dollars on 12th May 2021. But you know, a week ago, it was traded 55,000 US dollars. 
So a drastic crash was happened from 55,000 US dollars to 31,000 US dollars for one Bitcoin. So this market crash, after this market cr crash, billions and millions of money were lost by the investors. And this crash, the main reason behind this crash was uh, the Elon Musk cheat. Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoins. So, but he changed this. And after that, Bitcoin again, shoot up after one month. So, what is the uh, uh, conclusion of this? Are the Bitcoin market are guided by emotions or is there any, any fundamental? So, so many investors are, you know, invested in this market and these people's investment were diminished, investment were decreased due to a particular person cheat. <coughs> so, can we still believe in, in the crypto? currency market or not so this this is known as emotional uh, investment so one pe one person cheated and other person started to sell off so that the market were crashed <coughs> so this is one example a lot of examples we can have <coughs> are the market driven by sentiments or emotions so what was the reason that Bitcoin went crash due to a cheat by Elon Musk? So there are studies. There is a correlation between Bitcoin price and changes in curry volumes regarding Bitcoin. This is, I have taken from a paper. And cryptocurrency price depends heavily on social media sentiments and web search analytics tools such as Google Trends. So similarly, you, you can find, if you check Google Trends, the May 12th or something, a day like that, May 12th, if you search Bitcoin crash keyword, <coughs> the Google Trend Bitcoin crash keyword was top. <coughs> because across the world, many people have searched Bitcoin crash in Google. So people search Bitcoin crash some news, would come up and pop up and they know that the Elon Musk were teacher like this and they also started sold off. Okay. <coughs> Are you understanding? Any questions at this moment? So this I, I have taken from a paper. The cryptocurrency price depends heavily on social media sentiments and web search analytics tools such as Google Trends, etc. So, uh, economist people, can you identify this person? Paul Krugman? Economic students? Who is he? It's not fair, economic people's economic students not identify this man. So this is this person is called Paul Krugman, and this fellow predicted the global economic crisis 2007 in advance, but people were not uh, heard his uh, prediction, and the global economic crisis will happen, and he got Nobel Prize in economics. And he said that Bitcoin is evil of the 21st century. He said the cryptocurrency is, is an evil of the 21st century because there is no cross check. There is no way to identify a fundamental or real value of a cryptocurrency. So we can identify the real value of a share. There are ways. We can identify the real value of gold, but we cannot identify the real value of cryptocurrency so that the person who is against crypto cryptocurrency always he's always criticizing cryptocurrency i don't know the the next uh, after five years in all countries the national government uh, will have a cryptocurrency their own india have a cryptocurrency uh in the india's own cryptocurrency or sri lanka's own cryptocurrency something like the situation may go on but the Paul Krugman is against the 
क्रिप्टो करेंसी सो द क्रिप्टो करेंसी आई डोंट नो एनी ऑफ द पीपल हैव इन्वेस्टेड इन क्रिप्टो करेंसी बिकॉज़ अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल यू नो दे हैव इन्वेस्टमेंट इन क्रिप्टो करेंसी बिकॉज़ ऑफ द डिजिटल नॉजस सो व्हाट इज डिजिटल नॉजस मींस नॉजस मींस समथिंग लाइक एड्स so lot of ads in cryptocurrency will get money double you will get 200 percentage you will get 500 percentage after one month something like these ads uh, uh, automatically spontaneously attracted people to invest in cryptocurrency so not just uh, the cryptocurrency market using the power of nudges nudges So nudges are interventions that influence people in particular directions, but that also allow them to go their own way. Nudges subconsciously influence. So there are type one and type two nudges. These type one nudges subconsciously influence you to purchase it because something like you know, uh, <clears throat> I will I will say some examples like LPG gas subsidy give up program. It was the program uh, uh, introduced by the Modi government, and after that. there are many richer class people they have uh, uh, avoided the subsidy and the government has saved a lot of uh, money crores and crores of uh, this uh, money from this program lpg give up subsidy program so many people they uh, they adopted their own non subsidy so th this uh, this is a policy not just this called policy not just so many policies uh, the government were introduced beti padao beti bachao so actually the indian government adopted something from the us and now the um, you know uh, uh, <coughs> uh nidhi ayog uh, they have uh, planning to uh, have a separate you know separate uh, division of uh, uh, research for development of this digital nudges development of nudges for policies so these nudges uh, effectively used by the cryptocurrency market a lot of angsters i i would say angsters they they were attracted uh, towards the cryptocurrency market but the proud pole group group man still believe that bitcoin has no fundamentals okay so the biases i am going to discuss the biases uh, biases uh, there are two types of biases cognitive biases and emotional biases so i will explain these two biases uh, cognitive biases in investment a cognitive biases is a systematic error in thinking that impacts one choices and judgments it was first proposed by Uh, Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman. These biases influence our perception of the world and can lead us to poor decision making. So the cognitive biases, uh, I can say some examples. One of the example is situations in which a thief uh, wears a police uniform to pass through a security checkpoint. The security officer assumes that uh, the thief has a real police officer. So this is an example of uh, this cognitive bias. <clears throat> Emotional biases occur spontaneously based on the personal feelings uh, of an individual at the time of a decision is made. So emotional bias is due to emotions of a person, but the cognitive bias is different. Uh, it's a cognitive domain. The bias arising from the cognitive domain of a person. <clears throat> so i will say uh, more details about these biases uh, then you will understand biases so biases in the investment process uh, the types of cognitive biases cognitive bias is one of the biases uh, which may arise uh, during the decision making uh, during the cognitive processes uh, this is something like uh, a brain or intellectual biases 
So sometimes you know these biases uh, lead for uh, lead for more returns. Sometimes these bias lead for more losses. Both ways it it may happen. There are studies you know. Uh, uh, there are studies recently I have noticed a study. Uh, the biases leads for more financial literacy. There is a connection correlation between biases and financial literacy. If a person is biased, he may be more financial literate. So you 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 are something like uh, overconfident. You are something like uh, uh, you know biased person, and you may uh, interested to learn more. But there are reverse studies. Uh, if a person who is illiterate, his bias is also more. So different kinds of studies we can see. So uh, confirmation biases. First bias is confirmation biases. Confirms on ideas only and ignoring the information that opposes them. Usually the students and uh, teachers have this bias. You know, they confirm their own ideas and they ignore the information that opposes them. So, for example, an investor who is holding Reliance Industries share, welcoming all positive news about Reliance Industries. But he may neglect all negative news about Reliance Industries shares. There are, there are people, uh, uh, you might have experienced uh, a person who is uh, saying some bad news about your close friend. And you uh, may say, this is uh, wrong, that person is not right, like that. So this is a way. If you're holding Reliance in the Swishers and you got some bad information about Reliance, you won't believe. You may neglect the negative news about Reliance. This is known as confirmation bias. And self-serving bias. So this is also bias usually people have. Tendency of the people to attribute the positive outcomes as skills and negative outcomes as bad luck. Positive outcomes as skills and negative outcomes as bad luck. For example, an investor who has good returns as expected may say the increase in return due to his investment skills. And you, you, you may uh, similarly you can uh, connect, relate this with the mark of a student. Some students, uh, he or she may get brand and uh, he say that is my intelligent my hard work uh, uh, has <clears throat> lead for the getting of rank and you know the person who uh, who uh, who is not uh, you know uh, not cleared a uh, subject and he assumes that is due to bad luck or <coughs> some of the problems of valuation or something like that so this is not a self serving as it's always, uh, you know, they attribute to positive outcomes as skills and negative outcomes as bad luck. <coughs> Next. Herd mentality. This is another very important outcome in Bitcoin crash was happened due to this bias. Herding means just following others. If Elon Musk teacher, Elon Musk started a sell of this Bitcoin and others are also repeated this just following up so investors may follow things what the other investors are doing on the assumption that what the majority does is right so the crashes market crashes happen because of this herd mentality so for example an investor buys reliance industries limited because most of the investors are buying reliance industries limited so market sometimes market is moving up because of the hard mentality, sometimes market is moving down because of the hard mentality, right? So this is another bias. The negativity biases. So some investors, you know, they put more weight on bad news than this. These people are negative. We we can see many people like this. They are always negative. you will not get anything. So something like that. Some investors put more weight on bad news than the good news. They are pessimistic persons. They are not optimistic. We should find a person uh, who is optimistic for uh, uh, writing of competitive examinations and all. So many investors have missed the bull market rally because of the fear that it will reverse suddenly. See, I know person, they won't purchase shares because they believe that this prices will come down. The price they are waiting, the prices will come down. 
but unfortunately the prices will not come down prices again go up and the person who lost the market uh, capturing of uh, that shares and sometimes after one month or two months he knows that the prices again again goes up okay so we will not get it but we uh, uh, you know the, due to this negativity biases he lost the uh, he lost the market he lost the opportunity to buy that shares in a lower price right so this is negativity bias there are people who are negative they always believe that markets will come down this is people are called bears or pessimistic bears okay <clears throat> the next framing bias uh, so making an investment decision based on the way the information is presented not on the merit of the information so framing means the different way in which we can frame an information so first one your investments increases by 13% over the course of the or course of the year but loses 3% of that gain due to some year end market volatility so this is actual fact <clears throat> my investment has increased by 13% over the course of the year but last time i have a loss of 3% of that gain of that gain due to some market volatility but the information can be presented <coughs> here so your investment increases in value by 13 percentage over the course of the year the market hit a rough patch near the end of the year but you are able to hold on to 10 percentage of your gain so the same sentence in the first one is presented very very different way in, uh, in the second one so even though the outcomes are same, people are more likely to prefer the statement two because it is presented as a gain instead of a loss. So in second sentence, <clears throat> all the words put uh, weight on this gain and there is no word which is used uh, for uh, uh, losses. In first sentence, it is clear that there is a loss due to market volatility. But in second sentence, there is no <clears throat> stress on the loss. Okay, so this is not a framing bias. People, uh, you can find people who are using these biases, who who are addicted to these framing biases. <clears throat> this is again, uh, this is similar to herding biases. It's known as bandwagon effect. When you know, <clears throat> we we people always vote in the elections because of. So we have uh, we have some. Uh, soft corner towards a political party or we have some affiliation towards a political party so this is uh, known as bandwagon effect uh, because <clears throat> it's a psychological phenomenon in which people do something primarily because other people are doing it okay so simply similar with the herding bias the problem is the person who is imitating others or the person who follows others regardless of their own belief he do not know anything about his own his own he uh, does not have his own stand or he override or ignore his own stand so warren buffett is a famous investor who is resisting the bandwagon effect he he uh, he his famous advice to be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy okay be vigilant vigilant when others are greedy and like that to be greedy when uh, others are fearful and uh, fearful when others are greedy so this is another principle given by warren buffett uh, for this bandwagon effect <clears throat> and you can see some charts uh, purely uh, based on this bandwagon effect uh the bitcoin prices you know the bitcoin prices reached the top uh during this 2018 because people you know have the bitcoin and bought the bitcoin and census increased by 15 percent it's also bandwagon effect <clears throat> the second shift and uh emotional bias emotional bias again is different from cognitive bias these bias arise due to emotions of the people emotions of the people so I can see some of the examples, loss aversion. Some people, you know, uh, <clears throat> strongly about the pain from the losses and the pleasure from the equal gain. You can see people 
after examination they were uh, crying uh, due to some of the questions they they couldn't be able to answer it well but they don't tell about some of the questions they have got it cleared due to some lack factor so uh, <clears throat> i would say the lack factor of, of these students the lack factor was more 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 than these uh, pain but these people always you know two weeks or three weeks they they won't sleep uh, because of this uh, pain because they have uh, they have mistaken uh, two three questions okay so similarly low salvation if uh, if somebody uh, have lost uh, uh, some money due to some uh, bad uh, movements in the stock or volatility and these people are always pain you know uh, this is psychological uh, position this is bias in known as low aversion bias feel strongly about the pain of uh, pain from the loss but these people uh, are getting some gains but they uh, don't like to think about the game but these people are always uh, you know always they are uh, uh, thinking about this loss so again, another one is overconfidence bias. When an investor feels he is superior to others in knowledge and skills, this bias is arise. So superior knowledge. Overconfidence people always believe that they are superior. So if the price of recently bought shares goes up, then the price might get overconfident about his stock picking abilities uh, and may invest in a stock without proper research. So this is known as overconfidence bias and hindsight or hindsight bias an individual to believe that the event was more predictable than it is actually was and can result in an oversimplification so the person who believes that everything can be predictable okay what would happen so what would happen you may predict i will get out of 40 30 marks uh, from this stock market operations so inside, this is inside, but I, uh, so as per the merit or something like, uh, the person may not be able to get this mark. Okay. So this is known as inside bias, uh, the 2008 financial crisis and dot com bubbles in nineties, this incident stated that enthusiastically about how all the signs were there and everyone knows it was coming, but these people oversimplified these crashes. So after that, these crashes were happen. What happened? There is no crashes. Nothing will come up. And these people were oversimplified these crashes. And finally, crashes reached and uh, billions of money were lost of, uh, of these investors because of the crashes. And endowment bias is another one. The feeling that we do own is more valuable than we do not. So some people, you know, they are uh, they are keeping the stocks as their kids. Similarly, we can say that like, you know, marrying of stock, they won't sell the particular stock. Even there is a crash of that company in the market or something like that. So this is known as endowment. The feeling that we do own is more valuable than we do not. So this endowment biases. So this is very important bias uh so i i will take the strategies in the next class today i think uh, it is uh fine to stop any questions you can ask uh, from these uh, biases